Ladies and gentlemen, that smiling face you see before you is that of Ronnie Bennett in Lake Oswego, uh, Oregon. Did I pronounce is it? Oswego. 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 It's not hard. There's even a town in your state called Oswego. Pronounced oh, really? the same way. Really? Well, it's interesting that you used to live in Portland. Uh, 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 where is it? Portland. Uh, was that Vermont or New Hampshire that you were in? Or Massachusetts? Oh, Portland, Massachusetts. Where, where were you before? Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Okay. You know, me and my geography. And well, then, you know, a lot of people don't know the difference. And when I told friends that I was moving to Portland, Oregon, they said, Aren't you already there? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Some, well, you were born in Portland. Then Oregon. You, uh, yeah, and then you moved to Portland, Maine. But there were a whole lot of other places in between. I, I know, but you moved to Portland, Maine eventually, and then from Portland, Maine, you moved essentially to Portland, Oregon. Yes, and it was hard to make that happen, that even things like moving companies and stuff would get confused. Really? They had to be real careful with everybody on the telephone that they understood this is two different states happen to be the same name and city, you know. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so how have, uh, how are you feeling? You okay? You moving along? Singing a song? Your hair's I'm growing getting, out. Yes. Getting by. Yeah, yeah. Not too hard. It's um, you know, you know, one of the things about having a serious disease as opposed to a flu when you go to bed for a week, mm -hmm. um, is there's a lot of maintenance, constant maintenance. Yeah. You have to keep track of appointments with the various doctors. And there are many doctors, many. Yeah. Uh, and they each do their own little thing. And then there are the medications. And I was concerned about way too many medications. And then I realized that only I have only four prescription drugs. That's not bad for somebody with I have more than that. And, um and all the rest of things people take all the time, like calcium and vitamin D and, you know, that sort of stuff yeah. that are non-prescription. Uh, and I just hate counting them out. And then, you know, those little boxes you can get and you put the pills in each little box or each day. Yeah. Well, they don't have a place for 30 minutes before meal, which is why I have to take <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you can't just put them together with the rest. <clears throat> And then I got so fed up with it, after all this long, counting them out every day on Saturday, that about a month ago, I said, you know, I'm just going to do it every day as I need them. Well, that's stupid. Now how many bottles do you have to open all week, you know, and pour things out? Yeah. So I went back to counting them out well, on Saturday. Uh, everybody has their own way of doing it. My, uh, my wife has uh, these little glassine packets. And so oh, she they come from the pharmacy that well, way, right? Well, no, 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 no. She just buys them in bulk, okay? And then she uh, lays them out on the bed in, you know, like 15 of them or whatever, 15 like portions. This. And then she drops them into these, ba ba uh, these uh, little baggies, which to me seems a bit extreme. So I have one of those, you know, those boxes, those plastic boxes with the day of the weeks for a month. And then I just drop one in each, and then another one in there, and then another one in there. But I just thought, where's the the inventive genius who doesn't come up with a thing where you take your pills and uh, you, you have a box or something, that, and and you just simply throw them into this chute and it spits <laughs> them out, right? What a funny idea. Well, it's not a funny idea. Somebody should have been it and spits them out into the... For shape, huh? for size, for color. You know, there's a whole lot of things you're asking one shoot to do. No, 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 no. But I'm not putting all the pills in at once. I'm putting, like, uh, I'm putting in my, my Cialis in there. And then it'll boom, 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 boom. And I'll put the next one in there and boom, 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 boom. Why? Why should I have to do them when you could have a machine? There's that your could. pills. Huh? Why not? Why shouldn't you? I don't understand why you well, shouldn't. No, but why should I have to sit there putting? Well, there are pharmacies, Alex. You see them on TV that they send your pills to you already in the packets that your wife makes for herself. Yeah, but I'm not going to one of those pharmacies. I'm going to the one that gives me. Well, but, really yeah, but what I'm saying, if you, 
if you were really serious about this, you would find one of those phones. No, but I can't because I have to use Express Scripts, and Express Scripts is only taken by Walgreens, and Walgreens doesn't do it. So Really? This is really an old person but, conversation. But I do no. save two-thirds on my medicine this way. So I, you know, but believe me, what I used to pay, I, they should put them in a little packet for me. This is really an old person's conversation. Well, this is an old person's show, I've decided. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's face it, at, at 79, you know, what, it, what, what uh, is important to me is not important to most people in America. That's why I don't have the listenership I should have. If I was giving out, like, you know, uh, shopping hints or uh, makeup hints or something like that, I'd have millions of viewers, but because I'm an old person and people don't really want to hear from old people, uh, I, uh, I, I enjoy a rather small audience that goes, oh, let's listen to the curmudgeon tonight. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I've, I've learned that that, you know, but, but at seven, look, at our age, this is what concerns us. You yes. Know? Yes. And it's terrible that we have to be concerned by it. When when you were younger, did you ever think about the? You forgot to go to your doctor once a year. Oh, I. Whenever I'd show up, he'd look at the chart and say, "Good grief, it's been five years." Yeah, exactly. And how lucky for me that I went seventy six years with nothing more serious than a bad flu once in a while. That was it. That's pretty good run of being really, really healthy. You know, and now. Everything that might have happened to me in my whole life is getting crammed into the very end of my life. Yeah, it, it, all of a sudden, the good Lord says, I think I'll throw it all at you at once. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You've gotten off too easy for, so, for three quarters of a century, so let's try this. Well, you know, my problems, I, I, you know, I have little niggling problems. You know, the, the neuropathy in the feet, or I have a, a hernia, or I have, you know, it's, it's nothing that's important except for maybe the possibility of the prostate cancer which again isn't important at my age because it's you know it's we mild yes we understand oh i found out from my doctor the other, my my main physician who i was seeing and i told him about this thing with the with the prostate and he says eh he says at your age uh 70 per i said i hear 70 percent of people at my age have prostate cancer and they go 70 he says i hear it's a little bit higher he says when you reach 90, if you're still alive, your chances of having it are 100%. <laughs> yes. He said, so, you know, don't even worry about it, you know. But, uh, so, I mean, I have what I call, I mean, compared to your situation, I've got nothing. But it's just things that make you grouchy all the time. Like this, this thing that wouldn't go away, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and neither could some doctors. And then I found one and said, oh, five prednisone, that will take care of it. You know, and it and it, the, after the first day of taking the pills, I went. I feel seventy five percent better. Better. So, but so for See, me, I mean, that's the upside of um, of medi There's so many things that we haven't been able to find either a prevention or a cure for, like most cancers that are in that <coughs> are in that box. Um, but there are some things that we've done really well on. It's one of the things that drives me around the bend about anti-vaxxers. Oh, I hate them. It, that starting with World yeah. War II, when, when uh, penicillin was invented, antibiotics and vaccines just kept coming one after another after another until all childhood diseases practically were wiped out. And now we have, because of the anti-vaxxers, the biggest outbreak of measles pretty much since you and I were kids. Well, I hate the anti-vaxxers because they really, I think, have killed people, you know? Yes, it does. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's not just little kids who get most of those kinds of diseases, but old people, too, who, you know, I, I haven't thought to ask, and I should, is if you got all your vaccines when you were a kid, which I did over a period of whatever years they mandate, are those good for a lifetime? You know, I think about that when I see a group of little kids around and wondering how many of them are not vaccinated for measles. Uh, I think, for instance, I've been told 
<clears throat> we asked about the measles vaccine, and they said, yeah, Who's you that? could you could take it at your age. Who is they, Alex? They are the pharmacy where they usually do vaccinations and things like that. And we asked our doctor, and he said, if you want to do it, it might not be the worst idea in the world, he said. But, you know, you... Uh, you know what's strange? You you get, to begin with, you do get a lot of immunities as you're growing up. That's why you get sick all the time when you're a kid. You know, that's why kids are... I didn't get sick all the time. Well, kids kids get sick a lot. I mean, they go they go to school, which is a real, you know... I mean, they have runny nose type things all the time just because, yeah. they, I don't know, they're kids and they get those but things. The but the strange thing that happened to me, strange thing that happened to me, is <laughs> I had a girlfriend who got at like 22 years of age, um, uh, what How do you call How old were you? Huh? How old were you at the time? Uh, I, I, was, uh, um, I was in my 40s. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, uh, go uh, on. Uh, your story. Okay, well, wait a minute. She got at 22 or 23 chicken pox. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, she said, well, you, you know, I've got it. See, so have you ever had it? And I said, no. And she said, well, you're going to, you're, you're bound to get it. And I didn't get it. And then. Some people don't. Yeah. A couple of years later, I got a bad case of shingles on my face. Now, the only way you get shingles is if you had chicken pox as a kid. But I didn't have chicken pox as a kid. And somebody, some doctor suggested that what had happened is as a kid, I got a small case of it and didn't know it. Okay, that, that I got it from some kid at school and it, I just got a little bit of it. And that was it, but it was enough to make me immune. So what happens is a lot of times you gain these immunity just through getting these things when you're kids. You know, sometimes it's good that you That's get That's well known. I mean, yeah. we've always known that, yeah. So, you know, it, the only <coughs> bad thing about chicken pox is it can come back later as shingles. That's the only bad thing about chicken pox. It just kind of rests in your nerve trunk or something and then decides to go crazy at some time. But uh, we, I still, I get an I haven't I had my pneumonia shot. You know, I had, uh, what have I had? I have uh, sh a shingle shot. I've had a shingle shot. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I keep up with all my stuff. And you can do it now, at least in New York. I don't know about where you are, but you can do it at the pharmacy. You can do that here everywhere. Yeah. The federal government pays for it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, uh, we're, we're all, we, we've gotten all our shots. I feel like I'm, I'm a puppy, a newborn puppy, and I've gotten all my shots. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but I mean, these people who are anti-vaxxers are, are just they're terrible. They're just terrible because they, they don't base anything on science, you yeah. know. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, I, I uh, so if your kid dies of the measles and you were an anti-vaxxer, fuck you. you well, know? except that the problem is, is that you expose a whole lot of other people. Oh, Yeah. With the kids. Well, so. part of the problem we had here in New York. Why do you think there are so many cases of measles this year? The most since, like something like just after World War II, I think I read. The reason, one of the reasons, is here in New York is the Hasidic community, the Jewish Hasidics, refuse to vax. And not and, the only ones. In, and in spite of the fact that their rabbis have told them it's okay. But they are not the only ones. Oh, I know they're not the only that. ones, but they certainly have caused a big problem in this city. But not they're not the yeah. only ones. You and really must acknowledge that. And by the way, they then send those kids to schools, and those kids give yeah, other so, kids But, but so do the ones that aren't Hasids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there, uh, there are people who do it for non-religious purposes, too, because they read, uh, they read the Internet too much, you know, and, and these anti-vax... Posts that people make about our, you know. I read this morning that the state of California is looking to pursue some kind of action against four physicians who have given children, who have not given children vaccinations because their parents didn't want it. And California has recently become a state where no excuse is acceptable. Every every kid is vaccinated. Yeah, but doctors. But doctors are now. If the parent asks, apparently, or they're looking into these several doctors who seem to have not given the shots because the parents just asked them not to. 
and that's not the law in California. Well, I mean, can can a doctor force a parent to have his kid have their kid vaccinated? I mean, I, I state I, it, can and it well, has in California. Well, the state can, but they should go after the parents because if the parents refuse to let their kid get a shot, you know what? And can you're we a not doctor. Discuss this? <laughs> well, no, but I mean, it, nowhere it, to go with this. We all know this. <laughs> well. You know, I don't know that I would blame the doctor. If the doctor were against vaccinations, then I would go after the doctor. But if the Stop. parents said, no, I don't want my kid vaccinated. So you don't get to. Eh, well, you know. Uh, but these parents have been terrible, some of them. I mean, it's just been, been horrible what's happened. And, uh, you know, the thing is, we've wiped out a lot of diseases through vaccinations and through... The thing that what we've wiped out and what's made the major difference is that we pretty well wiped out all the childhood diseases. I don't know if you remember, but I did when I was a kid, I may have mentioned this before, that every year, a couple of times, there would be, um, uh, oh God, what's that word? Um, there yep. would be stickers on people's doors, and there's a word that they couldn't leave the house and nobody Quarantine. could go in. Quarantine. What? Quarantine. Yes. And that for smallpox, uh, I don't know about chickenpox, whooping cough, diphtheria, all those kid diseases, mumps and so on, that what used to happen, you know, there used to be uh, lots and lots and lots of kids died before age, tw uh, age five, and it was because of those childhood diseases. Right. Now they don't, because we can take care of them, except for these few people, these few anti-vaxxer people. But it, it's truly a miracle compared to how many kids used well, to die of childhood diseases. It's really amazing. Also, we, we start to get diseases back again because <coughs> parents are so confident that it's not a problem anymore, that they well, just you don't know do what? it. I mean, they would, if the younger people who are the ones having babies, of course, they don't remember these things like the quarantine stickers or up until the vaccine and when I was in high school, um, every year when we went back to school in the fall, one or two kids didn't return because they because of polio. Mm -hmm. And every single year, one or two in my in, in, in your class didn't come back. Right. And do you remember that for two Sundays, successive Sundays in a row, everybody in America, every person in America, went to their lo local school, lined up, got a sugar cube, and everybody was protected from polio. There's a there's a story. Amazing thing. You remember Dave Garraway, who was a TV morning personality, first host of the Today Show, and he loved to tell the story about how he was going to a testimonial dinner for Dr. Jonas Salk, and he was getting all dressed up, and his son said to him, "Where are you going?" He says, "I'm going to a, a dinner. I'm going to honor a man named Dr. Jonas Salk," and they he said, "Well, what did he do to get a testimonial?" And Dave Garraway said to the kid, uh, he cured polio. And the kid looked up at him and said, what's polio? Mm hmm You know, now that is a testimonial. Uh, Salk was, um, was great. Sabin, who invented the application on a sugar cube, is what really put it over the top. Because it's easy kid, to do. No kid is going to scream. Kids and hated getting shots. They could take a sugar cube, <coughs> yummy, okay. And I remember I had the sugar cube. I remember it had a little blue dot on it. That's where they dropped the uh, the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he had to go back for a second one a couple of yeah. weeks later. And yeah. and literally in our lifetime, we wiped out a single disease. No, we wiped out many more. We were alive during the period that they found the vaccines for diphtheria, whooping cough, measles, uh, yeah. smallpox, you know, all of that. There's a whole list of them. That somehow, starting in the late 30s when penicillin, an antibiotic, was discovered, just one discovery after another came all through like the 10 or 15 years following World War II. Yeah. And so we pretty much wiped out every childhood disease. Yeah. You know, really yeah. awful one no one can figure out is cancer. Yeah, well, there, there's two, but that's the big, most widespread one. Cancer may not wind up being one disease. It may be many. As everybody has said, yes. Yeah. But here's the thing about polio that's kind of interesting. I read a book on polio, and it was fascinating. Do you know why polio came into, all of a sudden it came into existence? 
It, it, it didn't really exist prior to a certain point it, it, to any great extent. You know why it came into being? I don't know. You ready for this? Cleanliness. Where before, when we had a much filthier society, <laughs> you were kind of inoculated against this particular disease. Just, I'd, well, I'd want to see the source on that. No, I have a book on. I have a book on polio, and they That's list that. I want to know the source. Being in a book doesn't make the, it right. That's the well. I've heard on from several different people, and several different sources that the main reason why polio caught on. Was because we had started to clean up the society. You can't say it caught on. Don't. That's not. You know. Oh, a movie all caught right. On. Yeah, it became a fad. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Don't. I just come on. You love the. Really. I'm, I'm so wound up by how bad news writing online is these days that I catch everything. It's yep. just. It's so. It gets well, worse every morning. That's also because you're an old broad. Anyway. <laughs> it's true. I'm just a cranky old lady, crabby yeah. old lady. Yeah, yeah. But the point is that 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 they said that it was the it was the uh, the way we had started cleaning up everything. I mean, we, there was no more I manure in the streets and whatever that caused this disease to start happening and it happened in younger children because the older parents had already kind of been inoculated against it by the previously unclean society. You know, I've had enough of this disease talk, and it's time for us to go, right? No, it's not. we still got four more minutes. What other diseases haven't we talked about? I don't want to talk about How about, about Trump disease? I know more about disease than I care to day yeah. in and day out. Let's talk about something How else. about the Trump disease that has gone on in this country? Mm, it's bad. I, I have... I've lost all optimism for the future of America, completely. It, it really? I mean, you don't think... The damage it, he's done, if we started fixing it tomorrow morning, couldn't be done for dec couldn't be fixed in decades now. It's that bad. I, I you know, I have there a hard time... There are now a hundred and change of environmental regulations that have been wiped away. Wiped away. Aren't there anymore. And the people could go in and dig for coal or whatever else in places that were preserved before. <clears throat> and I mean, that's just one example. Um, and every, it's just about every week, if you read the back pages, because the news media doesn't highlight it, is that there are more and more regulations that are good for the earth and good for people that have been wiped away, that don't exist, and corporations can do pretty much anything they want. Is he doing this out of stupidity? Is he doing this out of... Uh, I don't know. Everybody debates it. I don't you, really you know, care. I, I don't think... You know, I, don't, I don't perceive him as a purely political person. You know, no, he's not. He's a, that, it comes out that way because he's president. But what he is is selfish, mean, evil. I think, and, and, yeah. I'm, and that's not exaggerating. Uh, no, I, I don't think you're exaggerating at all. Uh, I, you know, I was, I've been watching, uh, my wife has been, she hasn't been forcing me, she's been inflicting upon me, or making me watch, of uh, The West Wing, which I had never seen The West Wing. What? It's they, one of, I would say, one of the top five television shows I ever. know, I know, I'm watching it now, so give me a break, all right? Uh, you know, I'm, uh, but enjoy it. I just re-watched it for the first time since it was first aired. And it's just brilliant. It's stunningly and, and it, brilliant. It, but believe it or not, it holds up. It, it's not. It doesn't look yes, antiquated. Just saw it a couple of months ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I watch it and I see this president at work, and I cannot imagine Trump being that way in the White House, being that well, president. He isn't. Huh? We know he isn't. Yeah. I mean, I think he's just a very lazy president who goes on whim and listens to Ivanka as to what he should do next. You know. I mean, did you did you see what they did to Ivanka after the little video of her busting up a conversation among Theresa May and Christine Lagarde and a couple of others um, at that meeting? Mm -hmm. um, and she just kind of inserted herself in and started yakking away. The I don't usually follow these things online, but I did. Some it came into my email box from someone. 
and people started inserting her in every historical thing that ever <laughs> happened. So, they, so she was there with Roosevelt and Stalin at Yalta, yeah. and they put her with Martin Luther King on I Have a Dream speech, and on and on and on and on. I mean, it, hundreds of them. They were so funny. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, you know. Just quickly, uh, because we've actually we've actually run out of time in about five. Well, you could cut a whole lot of the stuff that we were talking no, about. No, 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 no. I found it fascinating. Anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but I, I did want to ask you quickly: what was your takeaway from the debates? I only watched the first thirty minutes of the first one and to me I don't know what all this big deal is that they were same old same old yeah but uh, I mean, did you, every did single line that came out of every mouth was rehearsed until it was just dead yeah yeah you it know? was all the same old and if I'm elected president I will make for a better America but right. exactly but the second debate I mean, that doesn't make some of them more interesting as a president than some of the others but I don't think at the other big mistake I'm you know, the Democrats are really good at making every bad mistake you can in yeah. political things, yeah. and they're already doing it again. And one of them is allowing, what is it now, 25 people to run for the nomination yeah. uh, for president. Um, and also, by the way, hello, everybody, it is 17 months until we vote. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In England, they announce a vote. They get to campaign for 25 days, and then they vote. I like that. No, I like that, too. But you know who's not going to like it? Uh, people like MSNBC, CNN, Fox. They love this thing. They, they were touting this the day after Trump got elected. They said, Oh, who's that goes back many, many, yeah. many, many votes. Yeah. Um, it's been happening I, for look, a long uh, you know, time. I've said this, I've said this before. Election. I'll say it again. The primaries are only a recent affectation of our political uh, process, all right? That we, there was a time when we didn't have primaries. What we did is we held a convention, and then at that convention they went in, and they fought amongst each other, and somebody came out victorious and said, here's our candidate. And then the other party would do the same thing, and then you would hold an election. That whole process started in about... Uh, 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 Nixon. August, it was Nixon August, Kennedy. August, August, September, somewhere around in there, and yes, then indeed. you just had the uh, the campaigning period after the last convention was over, and that was it. That we should be doing it. Well, not going to happen. We've turned it into a reality show. But it's twenty four seven, and it starts as you said. The first time I noticed it was the first. Obama election, when I turned on the news the next morning after the results were in with my yeah. coffee, I don't remember who, but the first thing I heard was XX, I don't know the name of the person, has announced he's running for president in 2012. That was hmm. the first thing, the first morning after the election. What my and now it's not everything. It the, happens every four the way years. The, the, the way first these thing things is someone the, announces they're running for president. The way these things look, when I see like Lester Holt and Rachel Maddow and uh, Jose Ballart and those people sitting there at that table asking the questions, I'm wondering where's Simon Cowell? You know, where's, I don't know who that is. He was the host of American Idol. Uh, you know, he's one of the judges on American Idol. It what looks, is, I don't know what that is. It, pretty, it was it was a, com, uh, a talent competition show, you okay. know, as there are so many, and I'm just I, saying that's exactly what it looked like. You know, it was uh, it was American Idol for politics, and uh, I just, <laughs> you know, I mean, I just uh, uh, I just don't think we need it this early, uh, and uh, why they're holding the debates, I have no idea. And by the way, when did we start running commercials in the middle of debates? You know, come on, come I on. I didn't know that we ever. You did. know, NBC, you can take two hours out and not make money. Okay, it would be really yeah, nice. Well, it's the way it runs. Anyway, uh, so uh, do you have any any anybody you like uh, out of these people? Because I think Ka I, Kamala I, Harris has come come up really good. <coughs> she went after Biden. Well, uh, she's going to be in the same kind of trouble, different topic, but same kind of trouble as Joe Biden pretty soon. Um, and that'll hit her. The one I like, who won't who won't come anywhere near getting it, is Mayor Pete. 
I like I, think, I like I like Mayor Pete. I like Elizabeth Warren, but you know. Uh, see, I don't want Elizabeth Warren to lecture me for the next four years. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. she ever does is lecture. Yeah, she's professorial. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to be lectured. That's why I think Kamala Harris is uh, take charge. I really, I like her. I, you know, I really like her. I mean, if she were my only choice, I would vote for her. But, um, but I'm not impressed from. Um, I'm not impressed from an overall. <sighs> How about Biden? I'm really torn about Biden. I'm really torn. Um, I don't think that we should ever vote for somebody because of their age, young or old, but on their qualifications. And as and even the young ones can die in office. That's why we have a vice president, hello, mm -hmm. um, as Kennedy proved. You know, I mean, what, he was 45 or something? You know, yeah. Um, so I... I know that people are being very, very, very careful about not saying he's too old for the job. On the other hand, when he's on a stage with people from age, what, 37 up to his age and everything in between, um, you, I, I see in him my personal slowing down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's and a good way I of it. No, I, I, I can see it when... He takes an extra breath before he starts an answer. I know being in that place where you want an extra second to think about what you're going to say than you wanted 10 years ago. Um, I don't know that that's a hindrance. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's good to have a second thought. Um, yeah. But I know that I'm sl I am slow down for the day by 2.30, 3 o'clock. And so does he. You can see his just. What do you mean? I got I got up two hours ago and I'm slowing down. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm very. I'm pulled in two directions on that. I mean, I spent 15 years writing about ageism. You know, and, and yeah. Um, and I think that whoever's the most qualified but, person but, should be the person we select. Well, we, we, I'll tell you, let's get into this next time because it all comes down to what we're capable of doing at this age in, the, <laughs> in, that, in that venue. I mean, we can still do a lot of things at our age, but being president is not one of them, okay? But anyway, uh, let, uh, I, let's go. Uh, we, we run really over. Which means we uh, wasted all that time on our disease. Oh, stop. stop it! Disease is important. <laughs> if, if disease didn't exist, what the hell would I have to talk about? <laughs> Just, like, oh God! What we've got diseases. By the way, Trump by the way, life. you right now are you're looking spectacular. You're looking Damn great. I'm you're looking really terrific, and you're not coughing as much. Head. You're not coughing as much either. So. No, I'm not because I've got this new medicine and it's working. Yes, it's working. Ladies and gentlemen, she is at timegoesby.net. That's her blog. Read it. It's great. <laughs> so is Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Talk to you soon.